<clears throat> now what do you want me to do? I have to be quiet. Okay, stand here. Hello, uh, this is Pastor Nick Hood, and in about five minutes, I'm going to give a little meditation on, Lord, we need you to put on a show right now. Uh, but before we get to that, uh, I just want to talk with you for a minute. This is Wednesday. Normally on a Wednesday, I would uh, be in church, and I would have what we call the Wednesday noon worship service. And uh, it's something that... Uh, you know, I've really grown to something that really wanted to grow, uh, but with the pandemic, you know, my musicians are sick, uh, the audience can't attend, uh, you know, because we're not having live worship in the church, and so uh, here I am out on the Detroit River uh, with my mother-in-law. She's my assistant today, and uh, in about, let's see, how many minutes? In about four minutes, I'm going to uh, <coughs> give a meditation today, and it's one I've been thinking about, you know, about how in the midst of a pandemic, we also need the Lord, uh, and we need the Lord to put on a show. That's what I'm going to talk about today in the context of Gideon, Judges 6, so I hope you'll stick around and listen to it, but let me share a couple of other things. Because of the pandemic... We're not uh, having the Good Friday service that we normally have. Uh, for years, it was People's Community Church. Uh, the last six, seven years, we've been at Fellowship Chapel. But uh, the collective wisdom of the ministers was that we just did not uh, want to take a chance uh, with any of us getting sick because, in a sense, every minister of a church in a, in a situation like this is uh, what the insurance uh, world says is a quote-unquote key man or key person. And the key person um, uh, in insurance parlance is the one that uh, the company, or in our case, the church, has to uh, insure just to make sure that uh, the risk of what happens if something should happen to that minister, uh, that the church could function. And so... Um, in talking with my colleagues, I shared with them, I said, you know, uh, it would be disastrous for our churches if any of us contracted the coronavirus. And uh, so we're not going to have Good Friday, but uh, Lord willing, uh, if the weather holds up, uh, I'm going to try to preach all seven of the last words. It will be truncated. But I'm going to give you a little word on each of the seven last words right here on Facebook Live, 12 noon on Friday. This Friday is Good Friday. And then Sunday we have Easter. And my Easter message is going to focus on the disruption of uh, the cross, the, the, dis the disruption of the resurrection. And what I mean by that is that uh, in computer parlance and technological parlance, uh, one of the goals of the technology companies is to disrupt your life. Now you may say, what do you mean, Reverend Hood, the goal is to disrupt your life? Well, the goal is, when I say disruption, you know, we think of disruption as something, uh, you know, that uh, upsets you. Uh, but a disruption is not necessarily upsetting, but a disruption is something that just gets you off of your track. And in an odd way, I think that Microsoft, Apple, uh, all the big companies, uh, all the security, you know, internet security companies. Uh, I use one called EST. Maybe you use Norton or McAfee, uh, Kaspersky. But all of them, at some point or other, want to disrupt what you're doing. And what I mean by that is you start with a goal of writing a letter, and then all of a sudden there's a pop-up. That's a disruption. And so what I'm going to be talking about on Easter Sunday is the disruption of the resurrection. You know, and how there were people who thought uh, with the death of Jesus that that was the end of Jesus. But what they didn't know was that God had another plan. And God disrupted the plans of human beings. So that's my preview for Sunday. Let's see, we have one more minute. Uh, I shared with you about Good Friday. I hope you'll be with me. Those of you who are members of the church, and maybe some who are not, may know Charlotte. 
Charlotte Gorman and then Freeman uh, Fleming uh, she died yesterday uh, not due to the coronavirus she had uh, some other health issues and I uh, was killing me because I was sworn to secrecy uh, but uh, to her husband dr. George Fleming her daughter uh, Nikki Bryson is it Bryant uh, you, you know we certainly uh, extend our sympathy to you and it's just so unfortunate at a time like this that uh, we're not really able to have a proper funeral for a person uh, but this will pass and eventually we'll be able to return to funerals well it's 12 noon and uh, I want to share with you a little meditation just a very brief meditation and it's entitled Lord I want you to put on a show right now and you may say Reverend where are you going with this well here is where I'm going with this we believe in God because we believe that God controls all things God knows all things God can do all things uh, but God has also made you and me uh, responsible for our own lives and because we are responsible for our own lives and God has empowered us God has uh, given us the mental capacity to think through our problems that uh, sometimes it seems like God is absent you know, you may remember the Richard Pryor joke somebody you know he says somebody asked him about where is Jesus he said oh yeah man he's on vacation he's down in I saw him in an alley in Miami eating a tuna fish sandwich uh, and it was kind of funny the way Richard Pryor would talk and you, you know it and, but and it's kind of sacrilegious uh, for those of us who believe in God and believe that God is omnipresent omniscient and uh, all-loving uh, and so because of that um, the question that becomes in a pandemic where there is illness all around us and it's so deceptive uh, because people acting like nothing is wrong take a look at this uh, let's see if I can show you uh, I'm here at Mariners Park there are people a whole row of people who are fishing uh, they're not thinking about a pandemic uh, they are just doing their thing and the Sun is shining the green the grass is starting to turn green uh, the birds are out here the water uh, is here it looks like we're the farthest thing away from worldwide illness a worldwide virus but we are in it and so the point that I'm making today is that this is one of those times in life where we need to call on the Lord we need to call on the Lord and for the Lord to make a put on a show right now uh, and I think the best way the Lord could put on a show right now is to take away this virus my brother sent me a, a, a video link of a preacher uh, who took a video of himself blowing away the virus he said we just need to blow it away well I don't know about that but what I'm calling on is the Lord right now to put on a show and you may say but Reverend where where's your foundation for this what is it that makes you think that the Lord will put on a show well the whole Bible uh, from the book of Genesis to, to the book of Revelation uh, is about God putting on a show uh, God puts on a show of force a show of strength a show of intelligence a show of might uh, when the people of God are powerless and one of those times is in Judges chapter 6 you can read it for yourself I'm just gonna paraphrase it but in Judges 6 the Israelites are under the domination of the Midianites and the Midianites mess with them uh, they you know they the, the Jewish people plant crops the Midianites come in and they take up the crops and so during all of this um, the angel of the Lord comes to a man named Gideon and in coming to Gideon the angel of the Lord says rise up mighty man uh, deliver your people and Gideon is kind of smart like with the angel he says look if God is with us why has all of this befallen us and some people today during the pandemic I'm sure are saying the same thing if God is real if God is with us then why in the world are people dropping like flies?
lives? Why are people dying right now because of a virus we can't see, a virus we don't even know about? And I believe that just as God put on a show for Gideon, God will put on a show for us. And you may ask me, well, what was the show that God put on for Gideon? The show was this. First of all, Gideon, uh, when he realizes he's in the presence of an angel of the Lord, Gideon takes a sheep, uh, he slaughters it, he puts it, uh, he makes a little makeshift altar, and lo and behold, poof, fire comes out of nowhere, and it devours, it burns up the sheep. And that lets Gideon know he really is in the presence of an angel of the Lord. But then after that, Gideon says, God, you know, before I go out and fight the Midianites and muster up the people of Israel and ask them to fight with me, you got to show me another sign. Uh, I want, in other words, put on a show for me. And so what does he do? Gideon takes a fleece, so like the fleece of, uh, of, a, of a lamb, he puts it on the threshing floor. So it's already covered, uh, it's a covered space, it's the threshing floor for the wheat. He puts it there and he says, I'm going to go to bed tonight, Lord, and what I want to see is I want you to make my fleece wet with dew and make my fleece wet with dew, but all the floor around it to be dry. And sure enough, guess what happened the next morning? Gideon can't wait to get down to the threshing floor. And when he gets there, the fleece is wet. It's so wet, he can wring it with his hands and it fills a bowl full of water. But the floor around the, 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 the fleece is dry. And for me, that would have been enough. But Gideon, he says, oh no. He said, God, if you're really real, let's flip the script. He said, I want to go to bed one more night. And this next time when I go to bed, he said, I want the fleece to be dry and I want the floor to be wet. And the funny thing, my friends, is it's all probably in an enclosed space. It's the threshing floor for the wheat. And lo and behold, he comes up the next morning and the, the fleece is dry, the floor is wet. And with that, Gideon is on because God has put on a show for him. And uh, I can't tell you all the times in my life when God has put on a show for me. Uh, but one of the reasons why I'm a believer in God, the main reason, reason is because there have been too many times in my life when I felt like the Lord has delivered me. And so the hope, the encouragement, the good news I give you today is this. Hold on to your faith. Build on your faith. Trust in your faith. I think about all the times God has brought you through and because of this God will bring you and me through this pandemic God bless you God keep you I want to pray for you God Almighty I pray in the name of Jesus that you might put on a show for each of us where we are weak make us strong where we are doubting make us more confirmed where we are hateful make us more loving and most of all, grant us your peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This is Pastor Nick Hood. God bless. God keep you. I hope you'll be with me tomorrow night at 8 o'clock. I'll be praying right here on Facebook. And then on Friday, Good Friday, I will be preaching right here at 12 noon on Facebook. The entire seven last words. I hope you'll be with me. And then think about Easter Sunday. I want you to be with me on Easter as well at 8.30 in the morning. God bless, God keep you, and remember, I am praying for you. God bless. Let's take a look at this boat that just went by. Isn't this beautiful? Some people think that Detroit is a dump. People, you know, trash Detroit all the time. But you know, we have some of the freshest water in the whole world right here. We're sitting on the greatest repository of fresh water in the entire world. Guess what the second greatest repository is? It's the Sea of Galilee in Israel. So my friends, again, uh, thank you so much. I want to thank my mother-in-law, Nancy Page, who's with me in this process. Uh, she's my digital assistant. And uh, from the Detroit River, Mariner's Park, God bless.